only one way to find out if this would work. thought George was a real robot. <laughs> Being robotic for a whole hour was tiring. George was ready to get out of that thing. But he didn't want to ruin it for Hundley by letting him see the robot wasn't real. Since he couldn't reach the button, George decided to relax and wait till the elevator came. Oh no, I, I must have left the XF-17 at home. It's my favorite too. I can go get it while you finish setting up. What's it look like? Well, it's two inches tall, uh, it's red. Oh, oh, and it has no legs. George waited so long for the elevator that he fell asleep. Oh, hi, Professor. Hi. I just came to pick up a small red robot. You mean the one in the lobby? <laughs> he said two inches tall, but I guess he meant uh, two feet. Did you find my XF-17? Yes, it's so cute. How old were you when you built that? Six? I was 22. It's cute? I left it by the elevator because it got heavy. Heavy? There was the elevator. <laughs> Finally, George could go home. Oh, I left it right here. Oh, no. Someone must have kicked it. Check the floor. I don't think you could kick that thing across the room. Oh, sure you could. It's only two inches tall. You mean two feet. I know the difference between inches and feet, Professor. There's a runaway robot upstairs. It's small, red, and says XF-17 on the side. You got the controls? What controls? It has no moving parts. So confused. This sure didn't look like home. Who are all these strange people? That's not it. Is too. I know that handwriting anywhere. Ah! George. Professor Wiseman brought you to the museum because she thought you were my XF-17. Oh. <laughs> yeah, your outfit's so good you almost ended up on exhibit. Hey, that's a great idea. Huh? We promised an XF-17 model. We never said it wouldn't be monkey-powered. And that's how George became a museum exhibit for a day. <laughs> <laughs>